Having a good environment is crucial to be productive. And with that, I mean having the right tool for the right job. I'm going to go over my whole setup. Now this setup is on Windows. And what I will go over are things like extensions, programs, services and much more. Now a lot of this will be applicable on Linux and Mac as well. So I'm sure you will get something out of this as well. If you like these videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And make sure to check out the website to sign up for the newsletter. To start things off, I'm going to show you the extensions I use for Visual Studio Code. So moving over to the extensions tab, we can see right off the bat I'm using better comments. And this is of course not necessary, but we'll just make it a bit prettier when you make comments in your code. Moving on to the next one, we have the most normal one, which is just the Dart extension. And I don't think that one needs any introduction. Moving to the next one, which is the Dart data class generator. And this one is super handy if you just have a class and you want to, for example, just generate it to a data class or use the copy with method or the equals operations. The next one is Flutter and it's the same as with Dart, we'll just move over. And as I am using Riverpod, I have my own Riverpod extensions, which you can find on the extension store for Visual Code. It needs some small updates and I will try to get to that as soon as possible. But as of now, at least it has worked great for me. It just contains some small snippets to make things more easy. The next one is Live Server. And as I'm doing web related things, this one just comes in handy. After that one, we have Live Share. Live Share is amazing if you are trying to pair program or do something together with someone else, where you can just work on the code together with someone. The next one, I have Markdown Preview Enhanced. And this is just super nice to have when you are working on your README for in a project. And I will show you how that looks. So here I have a README for a personal project. And when I click on a tab to preview it, we can see that we have all of the README in a nice formatted text. This one just saves a lot of time to be able to preview it as you go. Later on, I will show you another way to preview it as well. For the icons, I'm just using the material icon theme. And it's just one that I've used quite a while where I enjoy the style of it. So a lot of the questions I get is what theme I use. And I'm using the OneDark Pro. I just really enjoy these themes. I've tried a lot of different ones, but I always just come back to this one. Now one that I really recommend is PubSwick Assist where you can just write your packages that you want to add to your PubSpec YAML and it will automatically add those with the correct and latest version. It's also very easy to just update different packages. And the next one, which I've gotten a lot of comments about, is just the remove comments extension, where you can simply use call and action to remove all of the comments, which is super handy for the Flutter counter application. And for web related stuff, I use the SCSS formatter, as well as I'm trying out view some. So I have the view extension as well. Now for the next one, I'm using the VS Code Flutter i18 and JSON. And this is a great extension for generating the boilerplate code for translations. You can also hook it up to the Google API to do the translations automatically. So if you haven't tried it out, this is something I really recommend. It's really useful and easy to use. The next one I'm using is use the YAML support extension. And this just makes it easier to work in YAML files. The last extension I'm using is the arrow lens. Right now I have it disabled because I feel like it's getting quite bloated with all of those lines, but I still have it there time to time just because I enjoy it. Now, after we have looked at all of the extensions, let's look into all of the snippets that I have. And I really don't have a lot of snippets. I just used three different main snippets. And these three I all got from field stacks. And it's just a way to create three snippets for creating the test code. So just move over to a normal test file. I will see if I can create one. This one will just be temporary and I'm just going to remove it afterwards. So for example, I can write test M and this will generate the main suite for a test with the main file and also the group. And if we look over to the snippets again, the next one is test G. And this one is simply to use to generate the group code. So if we go into the main method and just write test G, we can see a group with a test inside it. And now the last one that I'm using is called test S. So if you just check the snippets again, we have the test S. And this one is to use to generate a single test code snippet. So that one is very easy to use if you just want to write a single test, for example. Now, the next one is Windows Power Toys, which is a very specific thing to Windows. And it's a program that will simplify a lot of things you do day to day. So here's the repo, and you can find that down in the description. Following along that will give you all of the installation details that you need.
And here you can actually see the program. So you have a bunch of different extra features that you will get for Windows. For example, you will get a universal color picker. And this one I use all the time. We've used Windows Shift and C. And you will get a color picker for the whole Windows environment. And you have fancy zones, which I don't really use. But we also have File Explorer. So this one will enable previews of SVG files and as well as markdown files. And as you can see, you have a bunch of different other tools as well. So I'm using these tools every day, so I really recommend it. And it's a really nice addition to using the used standard Windows. Another one which is a nice addition is the Windows Terminal. And this is a updated one, which you can find in the Microsoft Store. I've gotten very used to using Linux and this one is just a good addition if you don't want to use the standard terminal or the command line for Windows or if you don't really like the normal PowerShell one. It just gives some additional features to a terminal and I will show you some of them here. So for example we have a terminal or a tab for the PowerShell here and you can add additional tabs if you want to. So for me it's using PowerShell by default but we don't have that blue jarring background. So one addition right away is that we're using the PowerShell syntax, meaning that we can use a lot of the syntax coming from Linux and Mac, such as ls, to list the current directory. And as I'm moving quite a lot between operating systems, this one just makes it a lot more easy to remember what to actually write. One example is that I have muscle memory to just write ls instead of dir, and this just simplifies quite a lot. So the next tool I'm using is actually called Notion where Tadas has an excellent video on how you can get started with Notion. That one will be linked as well down in the description. I have mine pretty much set up the same way he did. And it's just made the workflow a lot more easier. And here you can see, for example, that I'm working on the Notion section of my to-do. So this I use more for things that are not completely code related. For code related things, I use the integrated one in the different services. An example for this is, for example, the GitHub one. Here you can see my Listwell project and I have a bunch of different issues. And if you want to, this is a new GitHub repository that I just copied. So in this one, I don't have one board. But if we go to the project section, we can very easily create a Kanban styled board. Just for showcase, I will just call it Kanban and you can use different templates. I will just go with the basic one for now. And here you can have a similar structure to Trello or Notion where you just have your issues as to-dos. And when you're working on them, you can move them to in progress. And when you're done, you're done. This was just the basic one, but you can have a more automated one, which would move them over when a pull request is closed, for example. But I usually go with this kind of Kanbans when I'm working on my own personal projects because it's a lot easier to just manage. The next tool I'm using is called Figma. And this is the one I'm creating all of my designs for different applications that I'm going to create. And I really can't recommend design tools enough. It makes the development flow so much easier where you don't have to recreate the designs, but you just go with a style or a design that you have decided beforehand and then you just create that whole thing to begin with. It will just remove all of those times that you recreate the application or code just because you want a different design. Now, if you're lazy and just want things to work all the time, you would have a CI/CD section set up for your applications. In my case, I heavily use GitHub Actions and I have a full video of setup for how you can do that with Flutter in the description. But for example, every time you make a commit, it will run a GitHub Action, for example, testing the code or building the code, and you will be able to see the problems. Now, in this specific example, I already know that I have a bunch of different problems that I have to fix. But this just makes it super obvious that I cannot merge anything or go on with something else until this is actually resolved. And this is just how it will look. You can have your pull request and you can see that the checks failed or succeeds. Now together with GitHub Actions, I also use code magic. And I have a very simple explanation for this. And this is just because the publishing gets a lot more easier as it can handle a lot of the things automatically as well as you can split the build minutes for building the application and publishing it, as well as testing it for every commit. This will make it cheaper for you, as well as just simpler to manage anyway. So if I ever wanted to publish, I could just click the start new build button, and that would build and publish the application to the different stores. 
They also have YAML support, but this is used to showcase how actually easy it is to set up. Now another tool that I'm using specifically for Flutter, which I highly recommend, is FVM. This makes it super easy to manage your different Flutter versions. So for me, as an example, this project I develop in the dev branch. And when I make tutorials or want to work on other specific things, I can just go to change SDK and I can move over super simple to different branches that I already synced. As well as you can see that the project has the .fvm folder, which means that if someone else syncs or downloads this project, they can simply see that I'm using FVM and be able to use the exact same version that I am using. So if you haven't used this before, let me know if you want to see a future video of this. If not, you can also find that Flutter Explained has a great video on this one. I will link that as well down in the description. Now the last thing I want to cover is just linting. I can't stress how important this is to set up early in the project. I have custom linting rules, so I have two files, one for all lint rules, where you specify all of the lint rules in the project. Then I have the typical analysis options YAML, where I include all of those lint rules and exclude different files that I don't want to affect. Here I can also override some different rules that I don't want specific to this project. And this has just worked amazingly well for me. Now the place that I got in all of these lint rules is actually the Riverpod repository. And I really like the way it's super easy to change and manage. Now if you want to work in a very structured way right off the bat, you can go to the pub.dev and just write lint and you will find a bunch of different packages to set up lint rules for your project. So there are two main ones that I really recommend, which is pedantic as well as the very good analysis. But in the end you can go with whatever you want, there are a bunch of different ones that you can pick from, but just make sure to have one of them. That's actually all I use for my setup. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. And if you really like the content and you want to support me, make sure to check out Patreon. You can find that down in the description, I have a bunch of nice perks that you will get if you do that. As well as, of course, if you want to sign up to the newsletter and you will be notified when the new course is released. Other than that, I will see you in the next video.